Watched the film the other day, uh, uh, Simon. Uh, really enjoyed it. It's a, this great sort of throwback to the 70s disaster movies. Really enjoyed it for that. Um, could do with more of those, to be honest. Uh, Chinese cast, Chinese crew, you're a British director. I'm just wondering uh, if you had any problems uh, or what problems you encountered uh, from a language barrier point of view to helm such a film as this? Yeah, not really, because it was a, um, an international uh, film, you know, with uh, for China. So um, the crew was actually mostly um, from all over the world. We had 17 different nationalities on the crew. So we had, you know, the usual English, American, Australian, New Zealand, French, German, Malaysian, Chinese, so the common language on set was English um, and the most 90% of the cast were bilingual. Um, so um, I actually shot most of the scenes in both languages because um, I find that some of these films, you know, you make, you're making Hollywood and they'll say, okay, but we're going to try and sell it to China and they put one Chinese character in it and hope they're going to sell it to China. And then you have, or you have a, a Chinese film that's trying to be a Western film. And we go, well, you know, it's, it's sort of cheesy. We don't really go for those things. So I actually shot it very differently. There's, you know, there's two versions. The version I shot for China was all in Chinese. Um, and that was a challenge because I'm um, doing a scene that I've just shot in English. So I know what's going on. Um, and I know, you know, I know what the dialogue is. I just, I can't just, hit every single word with, you know, the, with the intonation or whatever. And so I have to rely a little bit more on the actors um, and also um, having very good script supervisor and translator next to me who can explain the way the actor just did, a, did that line. So although, I, as I said, I've shot the scene in English first, when I shoot the Chinese one, I, uh, I rely on the script supervisor who's, who's totally bilingual to say, well, in that take, um, the actor was a little more angry and a little less sympathetic. And I say, oh no, I want him to be more sympathetic. So then I would say to the actor, can you do it more sympathetic? And it would redo the take. And then it's, you know, the translator script. So I would say, oh yes, that, that was more um, how you wanted it. So it's a little bit of an, another step, another process, but um, especially in an action adventure film, a lot of the film is not dialogue based. And, or even if it is, it's sort of, um, it's not the most emotional um, dialogue. So you can um, more easily shoot two languages. It's when you come to the emotional scenes between uh, like the father and the daughter and things like that, which actually I kept in Chinese in the English version because that was the only actor that couldn't speak English. And so that uh, very emotional scene I kept in Chinese uh, and subtitled for the English version. So with such a diverse crew, uh, Simon, you've got, um... Uh, you know, you've got all these different nationalities, but you've got stunts, you've got CGI, it looks like there's a bit of model work in there, explosions, and the whole caboodle. I'm just wondering, um, there must have been quite a wide margin for error. Um, and I'm just wondering if anything went wrong or not as you intended it to do, or, you know, what was the most problematic aspect of all of that? Yeah, I mean, a lot goes wrong all the time because you're always on any film, whether whatever language is in, because you're doing very difficult, you know, technical, tricky things that, you know, humans often fail at. Um, and so it's not necessarily a language barrier. You definitely try and filter out any, you know, safety issues that might be confused with the language. So, as I said, the language on the set was English. Um, so that, uh, but there is, as I said, 17 different accents of that English. So there is some confusion sometimes over the radio. Um, but to be honest, the most of the problems we're dealing with is not language, it's to do with the heat. We're in a Malaysian jungle surrounded by, you know, 28 different species of venomous snake. Um, so that's, that's what you're mostly focused on, is trying not to get bitten by a snake or drop, you know, faint from heat exhaustion. Um, and so, you know, we, thankfully, we, we didn't really have a lot of language issues. I mean, I think the language issues are more subtle than that, than things going wrong. It's things like, humor is that we have a very different sense of humor to the Chinese. It, uh, some things are the same, but things like um, deadpan humor, they don't have. And so I, this, I'd shoot the scene in English and it was a very dangerous situation that they're running into. Um, 
and they're making sort of wisecracks. But I said, I want you to do it, you know, deadpan. And they didn't know what that was. And so I had to explain, like, you know, in the West, we can quite often be in an incredibly stressful situation, but we go, we do the opposite. We go very quiet and calm and deadpan. And they said, oh, no, we scream and shout. And, and, and um, <laughs> you know, we think that's funnier if people are panicking. So I shot, you know, that humor scene in two different ways because for the Chinese audience, they would think it was ridiculous that the characters were, were so calm uh, and being funny at the same time. Whereas in, in, in China, they were going, oh, we're going to be screaming and shouting and panicking. And, and we think that's really funny. So um, I had to learn quite a bit of cultural difference. And, you know, and again, you get that from the actors or um, my translators when they explain what the difference is between a, a Western audience and a Chinese audience. So talking about the, the cultural thing and um, uh, kind of the, the di different uh, accents and whatnot, uh, Jason Isaacs, uh, I, you kind of know this, I guess, from your, your Hollywood days where the Brits are cast as the baddies. He's South African in this. Uh, is that kind of how the Chinese uh, uh, re regard the South Africans as bad guys, as Hollywood regards? Oh, no, 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 that, that was an invention of Jason's. Um, because he, you know, t when we talk about the character, we say, you know, he's a dreamer. He's not a bad guy. He's a dreamer. He just, you know, listened to the wrong set of scientists. And, um, you know, he wanted to believe the ones that said it, the volcano was safe. And he, you know, didn't want to believe the ones that said it was dangerous. And so, he was a dreamer. So we talked about it and we were talking about, well, you know, it sounds very much like Elon Musk. So actually what he's doing is channeling Elon Musk, I think, for, oh, right. for uh, you know, the dreamer inventor who's got great big ideas. And um, so it's the Chinese would not know the difference between, a, you know, or they, they wouldn't understand the difference between a South African and English and American accent. So that's really something for the Western audience um to sort of tap into and um and funny enough we did have we had elon musk's um spacex um drone uh pilot working with us so for a lot of the fire stuff we um we had uh the uh the dr his drone and uh, we actually melted it at one point flying it through this set that uh that got a bit out of control as you say when things go wrong it, it um once fire starts it's very hard to control it and so we had this huge street set that we set on fire and the actors were supposed to be standing in front of it, looking at it going up. But as soon as we lit it, it was so dry and uh, been in the sort of heat for so long that um, the whole street went up in about five seconds and, the, and I had to shout, you know, for the actors to run for it because there's no way they could stand in the heat. But we flew um, Elon Musk's drone through it. Uh, and unfortunately quite a bit of it got melted. So, um, He's got the money to replace it, I think. Yeah, so he's fine. So actually, I think, you know, that's what Jason was doing. He was um, being a little Elon Musk about the whole thing. So uh, with Jason and all these scenes, you know, these scenes that you've got, he's got this one uh, sequence with the child in his arms. Um, and, you know, obviously you're more than aware sort of how restrictive uh, working with children uh, is, certainly with unionised West films. I'm just wondering... Uh, if you had any pro issues with that, because uh, the, the child looks, I guess it's acting, but does look terrified and she's running through that scene uh, or being carried through that scene with explosions going off left, right and centre. Yeah, but we, yeah, we still operated, you know, on the, we were in Malaysia and we were shooting at Pinewood Studios, Malaysia. So we, the whole shoot was operated under, you know, Western rules. And, um, and that girl just happened, that little actress happened to be a, the most brilliant actress, a fantastic find. I think went through, you know, like 3,000 kids came in to um, audition for it. And uh, she was just amazing. So she could turn that on. And she's actually not, you know, really terrified. She is actually acting because, you know, there's hundreds of us standing around her and um, it looks terrifying, but it's actually completely safe. And, um, you know, and Jason's there holding her and, she couldn't actually speak English and so you know she would teach him a few things in Chinese and and Jason would talk to her in English um, but they had a fantastic relationship and so she completely trusted him and and us and the crew and so she's never in a any dangerous situation we would never do that and um, she just happened to be a fantastic actress. You, you've worked in Hollywood you've worked in Britain you've worked with international crews 
I'm just wondering, uh, with the extensive um, studio films that you've done, uh, what the difference is that you find between the British crews, the Hollywood crews, and in this case, an international crew? Well, it's funny enough, what, what I always find striking is the similarity is that, you know, I can shoot in Russia or China or Australia or Malaysia or, you know, all over Europe. And, and actually the crews, it's the same type of people. <laughs> and you can spot the departments. I can, I, can, I can tell who's in the art department. They've got green hair and paint all over their, you know, trousers. You know, I can tell who's the camera department. They've got leather jackets and drive Porsches. And, you know, it's, it, what is frightening is the, is the similarities, not the dissimilarities. It's the, it's the same type of people that go into the film business. They're sort of like circus people, I think. And they're people that don't want a regular job and like to still play around like kids um, and have certain skills in certain areas. Um, and they, so they're the same whatever country you're in. It's very, very strange. And then finally, Simon, I just wanted to ask you... Um, of all the action stars that you've worked with from, you know, Con Air right through to Skyfire, Skyfire. Um, of all the people that you've worked with, or the actors that you've worked with, is there anyone that you've really had to say, no, you can't do your own stunts, this is far too dangerous. They're, 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 they want, you know, almost like a Tom Cruise level of doing the stunts. Yeah, I mean, I suppose the, the one um, that I had to do that with was, was Angelina Jolie on, um, on uh, Tomb Raider because um, she was willing to do anything and also she was very good at it. Um, I mean there's a couple of sequences in the film where she is better at it than the stunt girls and um, there was one particular stunt where we had a giant, um, there's a swinging um, beam that has to sort of puncture an urn and it's it's probably you know 40 feet in the air above a you know a concrete studio floor and it's swinging 60 feet backwards and forwards and and it took so long to make this thing that there wasn't the normal time to rehearse and prep with it weeks before the shoot it sort of was only finished the day before we had to shoot it and the stunt um double sort of got up on it and they were standing on it and sort of wobbling and weren't you know that great um and then angelina angelina got up on it and she's wired to it so she can't you know fall fall off but it's absolutely terrifying. And she was so good at it and so confident that, you know, she, she did it in the movie. Um, but sometimes, a couple of times, she was up on a very high ledge in one of the tombs and she, the, the safety wires get in the way and she's finding it awkward to stand around and, and she wants to take them off to make it easy. And I say, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, you're not, you know, you're not taking those safety cables off. Um, you know, Jason Statham's the other one. He's, he's so unafraid by heights. I shot on a 450 foot building with him in New Orleans and he's sort of hopping and skipping around the edge. And again, he wants to take the safety cable off because it's getting in his way. And I say, absolutely not, you know, so um, they're, the, they're the two sort of fearless ones. Um, most other people are pretty sensible and say, yes, I will wear all the safety gear. That's great. Thank you very much for your time, Simon. Really enjoyed the film. Look forward to your next film. Thank you. Very nice to see you.